So let's talk about teenage acne. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably already struggling with your skin and you just wanna know some of the easiest ways that you can fix it. I know I have been there. Now, you're not alone because lots of large studies have actually shown that up to 95% of teenagers are struggling with acne. Now, the problem comes because you don't know what products to use, how to incorporate them into your routine, what simple diet or lifestyle factors that you can do to actually help you manage your acne. And also, what products and treatments can you use you know, in the clinic or at home that are really going to help you to heal your skin? Now, in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about some of the main reasons why you might be struggling with acne, some of the really important things you can do with diet and lifestyle, and some tips that you can really incorporate into your daily routine that should help you with your skin. And then I'm also gonna to talk to you about some of my favorite treatments, particularly ones that you can do in the clinic that are really gonna help you to get your skin back on track. Now, acne is one of those things that there isn't necessarily a cure for acne, but what you can do is understand why it's happening in your skin, why it might be flaring up in your skin, and then also all of the things that you can do to really minimize it and give your skin a chance to heal. So let's get started. So we're gonna talk about some of the main causes of acne. Now, when we talk about the causes of acne, these can be things that you have no control over. So intrinsic causes, things like genetics, hormonal factors, things that unfortunately, unless you really preemptively want to do something about them, these are things that you kind of just have to manage. Now, there are other factors, so extrinsic factors or lifestyle factors. These are the things that you can do something about and things that you can incorporate into your routine um, or even just knowing a few tips and tricks or what to avoid and the triggers for acne. They can really, really help your skin. Now, all of these factors relate back to your skin barrier. And when we think about acne, we have to think of it as a disorder of your skin barrier. Now, I've talked about skin barrier a lot. It's that top layer of your skin. It's composed of dead skin cells, lipids, or basically that oil that your skin produces. Um, and it's also closely linked to your skin microbiome. So lots of those little microorganisms that live on the skin, they all work together to create your skin barrier. Now, when we think of acne as a disorder of your skin barrier, what that means is that your skin barrier isn't functioning normally. So you either have an excess of oil production, you have a, a difference in your skin microbiome, a difference in your skin's pH, and also maybe a disruption in the actual barrier function itself causing inflammation. So this combination of these things is what really contributes to the acne process in the skin. So if we dig a little bit deeper, the intrinsic causes that can really contribute to acne really come down to hormonal. And especially when you're a teenager, your hormones are going all over the place. And really what that boils down to is that it's gonna cause an excess of oil production in the skin. So that excess of oil production in the skin is going to contribute to you know, clogging of the pores or the follicles, that buildup of oil, dirt, dead skin cells, debris on the skin, and then the addition of bacteria or acne causing bacteria is what then contributes to inflammation in the skin and then contributes to acne production or the appearance of acne. Now the lifestyle factors that contribute to acne or are really going to be making your skin worse if you're not on top of them are things like your diet and we'll go into that in a moment. Uh, lifestyle factors such as hygiene, sleep, exercise um, and also stress. Stress is a huge one and chronic stress can cause lots of changes in your skin. So let's delve into those factors in a little bit more detail and then we're gonna talk about my favorite treatments, products, and also some tips that are really gonna help you to manage them. Next, I wanna to talk to you about the importance of diet and lifestyle when it comes to acne and actually really any skin condition or inflammatory skin condition. Now our diet or our gut health is so closely linked to our skin health. And the reason for that is something called your microbiome. Now you may or may not have heard about this. It's becoming a lot more popular in skincare circles. People are talking more about it. And I think it's really, really important because your skin health is so closely linked to the health of your gut. And the way that we're living these days with a Western lifestyle, Western culture and diet, all of those processed high sugar, um, highly processed foods is really damaging for our microbiome. Now, what does that ultimately mean for your skin? So if your microbiome and your gut is struggling, if you're not feeding it with the correct foods, then you're gonna lose diversity of your microbiome and it's going to lead to a whole cascade of issues that ultimately knock on to have effects in your skin. So I'll read you something that's actually really interesting from a course I did recently. So 
In a study involving 80 patients, those with acne had higher levels of and reactivity to lipopolysaccharide in the blood. Normal controls didn't re react to the E. coli LPS, while 65% of acne patients had a positive reaction. An increased intestinal react, uh, sorry, increased intestinal permeability is likely the cause. Now, what that means is that when you have a decrease in your microbiome diversity in your gut, it it causes leaky gut, and what that means is that. Um, inflammatory molecules, so lipopolysaccharide, can leak through the gut wall and into your body in general. And that causes inflammation. And that then has knock-on effects in the skin. So the skin really relies on a healthy gut microbiome. And then that in turn, we, we have a microbiome in our skin as well, which is actually different to our, the one in our gut. So they're both really closely linked. And those with inflammatory skin conditions had a lot more associations with gut issues, leaky gut syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, um, and also a disruption in their gut microbiome. So all that chronic inflammation or systemic inflammation is really going to knock on and affect the skin. It affects skin's acidity levels, it affects the skin's microbiome, and also the skin's own immune system, so it's regulatory T cells, and it's also affecting things like vitamin D and short chain fatty acids in the skin, which all then contribute to how well your skin barrier is functioning, whether or not you're gonna be getting inflammation, and also that change in microbiome can lead to an increase in those acne causing bacteria in the skin. So all of these things are so closely linked to gut health. So when you're talking about your skin, you not only want to choose products and treatments that focus on repairing your skin, but also repairing your gut as well. So the main things that you can do is eat a diversified antioxidant diet. So lots of fresh fruit, lots of vegetables, lots of those fibrous types of carbohydrates that your gut microbiome really loves to feed on. You want to minimize inflammatory uh, products or ingredients in your food. So anything that's synthetic, any high sugar, anything that is pro heavily processed and westernized. I think these types of diets are the things that really contribute to a dysregulation in your gut and then a knock-on effect to have a dysregulation in your skin. So increase things like green leafy vegetables, um, fibrous vegetables, fresh fruit, um, high antioxidant containing fruits and vegetables, um, omega-3s, 6s, and also incorporating supplements into your diet. So things like zinc that are really, really important for skin health and overall health in general. But zinc is really beneficial for acne patients and, um, and also for patients who have got inflammatory skin conditions. So like we said, 95% of you guys are tuning into this video because you wanna know what to do about your acne. Now it's not just the skin condition, but it's also the knock-on effects on mental well-being and overall well-being. You know, how terrible do you feel when your skin is flared up? You don't wanna go outside, you don't wanna socialize with friends. Like I know, I've been there. When your acne is bad, it really can have a knock-on effect on your mental health. So if we can get on top of the inflammatory skin condition and really get your skin looking as best as it can and as healthy as it can, then this is really gonna help you overall. Now, acne comes in various degrees of severity. So you've got mild, moderate, and severe. So the severe is those nodular cystic, really inflamed, deep set pimples. And in these kind of more like, worse, moderate to severe cases, I would say you need to see a specialist that is going to help you with your skin. In those cases, to prevent future risk of scarring and to really just get on top of the acne process. You know, you might need prescribed medications that a dermatologist or your skin specialist is gonna really be able to help you with. Now those mild cases of acne going into sort of those early moderate cases, these are the things that you can really do at home for your skin. And it comes down to choosing the right products, having a great skincare routine, knowing what to do, and what certain triggers might be really affecting your acne, and then choosing the right treatments that are really gonna help your skin. So finally, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of my favorite treatments you can do in the clinic for acne or acne prone skin. Now, the first thing that I really love and that I recommend to my acne patients is to come in and have specifically targeted facials and peels. Now, using some of those products that we were talking about earlier in the video, you can really help to get, on, uh, to get control of inflammation, oil production, and also help to clear out the skin. You know, blackheads, those deep set blackheads, buildup of dirt, oil, and congestion in the 
skin if you actually treat the skin with regular deep cleanses and targeted facials in the clinic. Now the second thing is to incorporate things like peels, so salicylic acid based peels or we have a really amazing range of herbal peels that were originally designed for severe um, cystic acne patients back in the 1950s but they use a whole array of natural herbs that are really focused to inflammation, balancing your skin pH and also helping your skin microbiome to repair itself and therefore your skin barrier to repair itself. So when you start on that process, what you're actually doing is encouraging the natural healing processes in the skin and you're rebalancing the skin and its microbiome so that it has the opportunity to really heal itself. Now then if you want to step up and go to some other treatments that you can do in the clinic, things like microneedling is one of my favorite treatments you can do for acne. Now there are new protocols coming out that actually show that acne is beneficial, uh, sorry, that microneedling is beneficial for active acne, but it's also really great for acne scarring, for post-inflammatory redness, so erythema, and also post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So those are some of my favorite treatments that you can do in the clinic. Other favorite ingredients of mine when it comes to acne uh, skin is that you want to use treatments that are going to really help to minimize acne and also the consequences of acne. So post-inflammatory erythema and also post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So something like the Is Clinical Active Serum. Again, this is exfoliating, it's um, anti-inflammatory. It really helps to remove things like um, <clears throat> pigmentation from the skin but it's also really great for acne and inflamed skin. So this is something that I would recommend to my acne patients to be starting to use, build up your tolerance to it. So start using it like on a few nights per week um, and gradually build up to see if you can be using this every night. Now the other thing that's really important is an antioxidant serum, something that's gonna protect your skin from free radical damage. So everybody should be using an antioxidant serum, um, but also one that is going to help with inflammation and pigmentation. So if you've got acne and um, you're worried about post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, so when you've had a spot and that area, the skin looks discolored or it looks darker or it looks pigmented, um, <clears throat> you want to use a product that's really gonna help with that. So something like the Pro Heal Serum from Is Clinical has vitamin A, C, E, and it's really healing and repairing for the skin. So it's great for inflammatory skin types. So things like rosacea, but also acne. Obviously this is an acne video. Um, this is a great antioxidant serum and it's healing, it's repairing for the skin, but it's also gonna protect your skin from developing too much pigmentation and um, and it's really going to help protect it. So I love this serum. I think it's a really great serum for those of you that think you can't use vitamin C. This is for you. <clears throat> now, finally, the other topical that I really love to use for my acne patients is um, a vitamin A based product or an alternative. So Differin, which is uh, a vitamin A uh, analog, and it's something that we use for acne prone skin. It's a really well tolerated topical that you can use to minimize inflammation, minimize oil production, and help to stop acne from forming and also help to heal acne that is already there. Um, the other alternative that I prescribe for my patients sometimes is tretinoin. So that is a vitamin A product that we use um, at night. And it's something that, again, helps to control oil, helps to minimize inflammation, helps to control the acne process in the skin. So there are more kind of medicated or prescription based, actually different, you don't need a prescription, but these are the more kind of acne focused medications that we can incorporate into your routine. Another treatment that we do here in the clinic is LED phototherapy. So it uses PDT and the red light LED to really help to reduce acne in the skin, reduce inflammation, uh, and also to help heal the skin. So these are some of the favorite treatments that I like to do in the clinic for my acne patients, along with diet, lifestyle modification, and the right skincare and the right products that you can be using at home. Now, when you incorporate all of these things into your lifestyle and into your routine, you can really make a huge difference with your skin. And one of the most important things for me is to really try and get people feeling good about their skin and to know and understand what is gonna work for them. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you guys next time.